Hey guys, what's up? John here from flyatmikealpha.com and today we're going to be going over chart supplements. So the chart supplement that has all this great, awesome information in it about the airport that you plan to go to. We'll go over exactly what it is, where to find it, and what all this information inside of it actually means. So to find the chart supplement, there's a lot of different sources that have them. But to get the most current one, you always want to use current documents. The only way you know if it's for sure is current and accurate, just go direct to the source. Go to the FAA. So from air traffic under here, under this tab, flight information, then we'll go ahead and go over to aeronautical charts. From aeronautical charts, we'll go digital products and chart supplements. From there, we can go chart supplement search. And I like to go ahead and just do something I'm familiar with. So we'll do KVNC and pull up the chart supplement for KVNC. We'll come over here to the airport and aid listing click on it and here we go we've got the listing for venice so we'll go ahead and we're just going to read through this line by line exactly what it is and what it means to you so venice municipal airport obviously that's the name of the airport sometimes they'll put the city above it but this is just the airport name we have the fa identifier vnc and then the ico identifier kvnc icao the international civil aviation organization identifier kvnc 2S means it's two miles south of the city that it's associated with, so obviously it's associated with Venice. UTC minus five means it's five hours behind GMT, or Greenwich Mean Time, so five hours behind Zulu. So if it's noon Zulu, it's actually, if it's 1200 Zulu, it's 700 in Venice. And last during daylight savings time, it's just minus four, so then it would be 800, 0800 in Venice if it was 1200 in uh, England in GMT. Next we have the coordinates of the airport and these coordinates are the geometric center of the airport. So the geometric center of all usable surfaces at the airport. That's the FAA's definition. So geometric center of all the runways, taxiways, all that great stuff. Next over here on the right, this is a listing of charts associated with the airport. The Miami sectional chart, the high dash 8H chart, the low dash 21 delta chart, 23 Bravo, and yes, there are instrument approach procedures associated with this airport. If you saw DIAP, that means DOD or Department of Defense, the military, has a few of their own instrument approach procedures associated with the airport. But of course, IAP means that Venice, we just have these standard FAA civilian approach procedures. Next down here, we have 18. That means it's 18 feet above sea level. That's the airport elevation. B means there's a beacon, and beacons are in operation from sunset until sunrise, unless otherwise noted. Traffic pattern L2, TPA, is 1018 MSL, 1,000 feet AGL. And the NOTAM file, so any NOTAMs filed, are going to be with PIE, Flight Service. So St. Petersburg Radio. So that every public use airport has NOTAMs or a NOTAM file associated with it and PIEs who's going to have them for Venice. So there are NOTAMs that get posted for Venice, and you could check with St. Pete Flight Service to find the latest ones, of course. That is the NOTAM file identifier. Now coming down here, we have runway 523. Runway 523, it has our dimensions, and it is a hard surface runway denoted by the H, 5,000 feet long by 150 feet wide. It's asphalt, and single wheel airplanes, 45,000 pounds, dual wheel airplanes, 80,000 pounds, dual wheel airplanes in tandem, 140,000 pounds. That's the maximum landing weights the uh, runway is certified for. Medium intensity runway lighting. And I don't think we have to worry about those weights too much with our 172s. Down here, specific information about each runway. Runway 5, runway and identifier lights, real. Pappy, two light pappies, P2L means two light pappies, with a glide angle of about 3 degrees on down to the runway with a threshold crossing height of 41 feet. So if you're right on the glide path, right on the pappies, you're going to cross the threshold 41 feet. And now, if your eyeballs are right on the pappies and your threshold crossing height is 41 feet, then your eyeballs are crossing at 41 feet, meaning your landing gear are crossing lower. And if you happen to be in a big, big jet with you sit 80 feet up when you're flaring, then 41, 41 feet with the threshold crossing height with your eyeballs isn't so good. Hence why they typically fly the glide slope on down and the glide slope antenna mounted on the belly crosses at 41 feet, not the pilot's eyes because the pilot's eyes are much higher. So with your 172, yeah, your landing gear probably only three or four feet below your eyeballs so it's not such a big deal, but just be aware of that. There are some trees to worry about. And runway 23, yes, there's reels, the flashing lights at the end, pappies, two light pappies, the L denotes left. I should have said that. So uh, two light symmetrical pappies on the left side of the runway, glide angle three degrees, threshold crossing height 48 feet, 
just that's based obviously it's still three degrees but it's just based on how far down the runway they're mounted with a threshold displaced of 463 feet so 463 foot displaced threshold due to a bridge so when you're landing on runway 23 yep there's a bridge so they have a displaced threshold denoted right there you land 463 feet down the runway is the start of the runway and then you land further on down where the pappies are going to bring you and your aiming points painted on there as well where the pappies are going to bring you to so Next, runway 1331. It's a hard surface runway, 4,999 feet long, 150 feet wide. It's asphalt, single wheel, 45,000 pounds, dual wheel, 80,000 pounds, two dual wheels in tandem. An example of two dual wheels in tandem, you know, since that's not something you probably deal with every day as a private pilot. Well, to give you an example, two dual wheels in tandem would be like a Boeing 757. Even a Boeing 767 or an Airbus A330 has two dual wheels in tandem. But obviously those airplanes weigh more than 140,000 pounds, so the runway can't handle them. Plus it's pretty short. So next thing, medium intensity runway lights, same as above. Runway 13, there's reels, pappies, two light pappies on the left. What's funny is this is actually no longer accurate. There's actually four light pappies there now, so they need to go ahead and update that. Even though this is the most up-to-date version, 7th of December 2017, they installed those four light pappies about a year and a half ago. So, hmm, so it looks like somebody's dropping the ball. The glide angle is 3.02 degrees down with threshold crossing height of 46 feet. There are trees and it is right traffic. And unfortunately, this is not displayed correctly either. There is a displaced threshold here on runway 13 now. So they definitely need to update this. So just because you have a current chart, doesn't mean you're not going to go to the airport and find something different. It's very good to do this. You need to be familiar and know what to expect, but even the FAA makes mistakes. So it looks like nobody has a current chart for Venice right now. There's trees and it is right traffic for 1-3. That's accurate, at least. So it is still right traffic. Runway 3-1, Odell's, Pappies. This part's accurate. Four light Pappies on the left side of the runway. Glide angle, three degrees, threshold crossing height, 40 feet, and there's trees. Uh, both these are displaced thresholds now, so it looks like this chart just hasn't been updated yet. Runway declared distance information. So declared distance information is kind of interesting. So let's talk about what TORA, TODA, ASDA, and LDA actually means. So your TORA, that's your takeoff run available. So it's the length of the runway declared available and suitable for the ground run of an airplane takeoff. So basically, what's not suitable for an airplane takeoff? Well, things like gravel, grass or areas that are marked no-go that are just maybe overrun areas. So you have 4,099 feet available on runway 13 for your takeoff run available. Your takeoff distance available is the length of the takeoff run available plus the length of the clearway if provided. So if there's some sort of clearway, then that factors in your takeoff distance available. You're concerned with takeoff run available for your 172 and little J airplanes. Takeoff distance available is an overrun area that would be used for calculations, maybe for things like jets and stuff like that. ASDA is your accelerate stop distance available. So the distance you have available to accelerate an airplane and then stop the airplane. So the length of the takeoff run available plus the length of the stopway if provided. There's not really much of a stopway there provided. Next, landing distance available. So when you're landing past the displaced threshold, obviously there's less available for runway 23. So it's 4,377 feet available. The technical definition is the length of the runway, which is declared available and suitable for the ground run of an airplane that is landing. Down here, service, that simply means what kind of service can you get there? Well, service for S4 means major airframe and power plant repair. So if you happen to pile up your airplane into a ball at the end of the runway, they might be able to fix it there for you. Fuel, 100 low lead, Jet A is available at the airport. What kind of lighting they have? Medium intensity runway lights on runway 523 and runway 1331. Real on runway 5, 1, 3, 2, 3, and Odell's on runway 3, 1. There's a CTAF as well. Pappy lights are on runway 5, 1, 3, 2, 3, and runway 3, 1. They operate continuously. Airport remarks. The airport is attended from 1200 to 0000 Zulu, and those little crosshatch things mean apply the daylight savings time to that. So it's attended 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. all year round, it doesn't change with daylight savings time, basically. Obviously, if we didn't have those little cross marks there, then it would be meaning that it's attended from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. all of a sudden when daylight savings time occurs, but it's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. all year round. Bird and wildlife in vicinity of the airport and on the airport. Yep, there's coyotes and birds and all sorts of great stuff. Service the perimeter taxiways are correcting, some settlement, and runway 523 is the preferred approach. There is personnel and equipment adjacent to all runways during daylight hours parasailing activity west of the airport along the beach 
airport has extensive flight training, prior permission is required for aircraft exceeding the runway weight bearing capacities, noise abatement procedures are in effect, call the airport manager at that number, and runway 23 is the common runway. The airport manager, again, is listed right there. Some of this information is duplicated, not a big deal. You have a nice plan view here, and showing you things like little bushes, where the pappies are. They're white, so it means they're on all the time. They're not pilot controlled. If they're pilot controlled, they'd be shaded in dark. Shows you that you have an airplane T, the wind T in the middle there. You have wind socks located near the runways. This wind sock happens to be lighted. You have the airport beacon right there. You have the display threshold there. And you have your ODAL's approach lighting system displayed there. You have the FBO, the hangars, and all that sort of stuff. Just to give you a layout, kind of what to expect when you get to the airport. Next, the last part of this entry for Venice is the weather and data sources are AWOS 3. So it tells you what kind of weather reporting you're going to get. And it's on 19.275. You can call that number and actually listen to it over the telephone. Communications are CTAF, Unicom, combined upon that frequency. The R here indicates that you can get radar departure control from Tampa Approach Departure Control on 1965. Approach Departure Control also 124.95, clearance delivery 18.075 for the airport. The fact that they have clearance delivery listed here means you should be able to get them on the ground. So it's either very nearby or there's an RCO, and there in fact is an RCO for clearance delivery for Venice. Radio aids and navigation, note and file SRQ, because the radio aid and navigation is the SRQ Vortex, so any notums regarding it would be on the notum file for SRQ. The Sarasota Vortex is a high VOR and also has DME on it. Frequency is 117.0. SRQ is the identifier, channel 117 is the DME. That is the location of the VOR. Venice is 167 degrees and 21.1 nautical miles from the VOR. So it's to the field, 167 degrees, 21 nautical miles. So to get directly to Sarasota, you'd fly the reciprocal of 167. And 77 is the actual elevation of the VOR at Sarasota. So it's up mounted up higher, obviously, uh, because Sarasota elevation is only like 20 or 30 feet. And so it's actually mounted up on a platform. And then the variation there is five degrees west, magnetic variation. So that's a fairly short entry for a chart supplement. It used to be called the AFD. Don't call it the AFD anymore. It's the chart supplement. All the pertinent information regarding the airport, yeah, this one's out of date. It's a great example that the FA is not perfect, but their information is the most current information you can get. You're not going to find a more current chart from any other provider because every other provider gets their information and their charts from the FAA. So ultimately, hopefully you guys found that video helpful. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, keep our latest videos, they come out every week. Give us some support on Patreon. Check out our Patreon page. Greatly appreciate everything you guys do for us on there. It really helps us keep this an open online resource for everyone. Check out our online ground school at flyatmikealpha.com. Make sure you sign up for it. Great course you can take on there. Lots of courses for private pilot, instrument pilot, commercial, CFI, and so on. All sorts of flight review prep as well as, as, well as IPC prep and all that other great stuff on there. As always, guys, if you cannot fly every day, then flyatmikealpha.com. We will see you all next time. <laughs>